The project is called SAILS, which means Self-Assembling Intelligent Lighter-Than-Air Structures. It started in 1998, when a team directed by Nicholas Reeves started to build a flying cube for an artistic event in Moncton, New Brunswick. The flying cube was made of expanded polystyrene and had heat-retractable membranes. It was the third flying cube designed by the team. It wasn't robotized and measured 3 meters 30 wide. It was supposed to fly over the river and sing when a wave of tide, which one calls in French a mascaret, passed below. It is the contraction of the words mascaret and carillon which gave masqueraden. The idea to robotize these cubes intervened thereafter. To create flying cubes, cubic aerobots, which could remain motionless in a closed space, a large room or an atrium during several hours, even several days. An attractive image, such as flying architectures, suspended in the atmosphere like soap bubbles and seeming to defy the laws of gravity. At the beginning, the Sales Masquerillians project had an artistic objective. The flying cubes are a work of art. But in fact, they led to several technological innovations. It is the role of the Hexagram Institute to locate the potential technological protections in artists' projects and to organize transfer in other fields. The repercussions of the Sales Masquerillians project consist as much of artistic installation and performance as in publications in technological or scientific reviews, or even in presentations at conferences of engineers, scientists or artists. The first problem that occurred was the question of the weight and the equipment. The cubes are carried by a volume of helium. Helium carries approximately a kilo per cubic meter. As 1,000 liters of helium is equal to one cubic meter, it can raise the equivalent of one liter of water. But the biggest problem was the design of the structure. A structure light enough to be raised by helium was needed and strong enough to preserve its form in the various constraints which it underwent. The first effective structures developed were out of wood or the lime. The balsa had been tested before because of its great lightness. But it's a wood very spongy, fragile and structurally not very resistant. The structures in lime were also very fragile but not as much as the balsa one. They were perfect for the experiments. But the realization of cubes autonomous, easy to move, being able to be sent in centers of exposure and to be assembled by various teams required more solid materials. For this reason, the flying cubes are currently made of composite structures in frames of carbon fiber assembled by small resin connectors. Being overall lighter, they make it possible to reduce the size of the aerobots. To start the installation, one starts by filling the interior enclosure with helium until the cube is in hydrostatic balance, which means until it remains at a fixed height in the atmosphere. As from this moment, the cube is delivered to itself and is highly unstable. The smallest movement of the atmosphere, somebody who passes next to it, the sun illuminating a corner and heating it a little bit, somebody which opens a door at the other end of the building and creates an unperceivable draught and the cube starts to derive. One then launches the small system of motorization and detection. Each cube comprises eight small turbines and 14 sensors of distance, of which six are also sensitive to the light. They measure the distance with the floor and the walls and send information to the computer, which reacts while activating the turbines to make the cube return to a position of balance. That creates very light movements, as hesitations which give the impression of a living organism or a large cubic animal which meditates in space. The masquerillians are intelligent automats. One can induce the cubes what to do by programming them in order to adopt a particular behavior in flight or give them average data processing to learn this behavior. Visually, the simplest behavior is to remain motionless, but it is one of the most complicated in terms of programming. The following step consists of placing several aerobots in a large room and letting them move in the directions of their choice by avoiding the obstacles.
the cubes can also produce a certain type of design. They can approach each other and remain at a fixed distance of approximately 10 centimeters. It is the first step towards what is called the docking, just like a large cube made of flying cubic molecules. The most complicated step of the docking consists of making three cubes that are flying freely in a room, locate the other two, differentiate them from a wall or a column, move towards each other and to remotely remain fixed. This first collective behaviour has been observed during several experiments and demonstrations. The flying cubes can also behave as the actors of an interactive artistic performance. They become characters who interact with the spectators. During an exhibition at the Museum of the Civilization of Quebec, three cubes flew in a large room. The eyes of an actress were projected on one of them. And when a spectator entered the room, the cube approached the person and started a discussion. Pouvez-vous fabriquer une machine? Oui. Pouvez-vous fabriquer un conjoint? The actress had to play the part of a computer, which did not have any knowledge apart from the information provided by the spectators. <laughs> Among the projects in progress, the team of Nicholas Reeves and the laboratory NXI Gustatio intend to use the cubes like true modular and flying projection screens. Screens made of a dozen cubes, laid out according to three lines and four columns to constitute a giant screen which flies and can move in space, and on which an image is projected. The screen can constantly split up and then reorganize elsewhere to reform the complete image. These are only some of the possible applications of the aerobots of the Sales Masquerellians project. Several others are being studied, and the potential of this project causes much interest within very varied disciplines, like the industry of entertainment, science, various groups of research in robotics and art, and several partners in new theatre and dance.